Hi, right, today we're going to check over the VVC valve timing on MGF. This is the one with the later MEMS3 ECU, which you can tell by the fact it's only got one cable going into the head here. Uh, the coils for the spark plugs are inside the head. Uh, one thing that does get discussed a lot and often gets messed up is the order of these connections to the VVC solenoid. Uh, on this later generation engine, let's say with a MEMS3 ECU, the black one is the temperature sensor that goes on the hydraulic uh, control unit for the VVC system. The brown one goes on to the increment solenoid and the blue one goes on to the decrement solenoid, so it should be in that order. Uh, this particular engine has got a problem with the VVC because it's only revving to about 5,500 RPM. All right, first we'll check the uh, timing belt uh, alignment. So we've got the cam cover off this side. It comes off with uh, five bolts taken out and one at the bottom, a uh, slightly different size, 10 mil instead of the normal eight mil, just needs to slacken off so you can uh, pull it out of the slot. So hopefully we can see, yep. So these little lines on both of the uh, camshaft sprocket wheels, one there. Those are now lining up when the crankshaft is in the correct position and the correct position is marked by this little line here, you can hardly see it actually in the camera but trust me there's a little line on the crankshaft pulley and if you push the belt down a little bit out of the way you can see maybe just about, if I can focus a little bit better, there we go. That's better. Now you can see that lines up with a line on the back part of the plastic uh, cam belt cover. Uh, to get to that you have to remove this plastic access panel which just has these little uh, pop-on screw things. One which unscrewed, one just popped off there at the bottom. Uh, that panel then comes out and to get the crankshaft in alignment, get it in rough position by, by clicking on the stock to motor a few times to turn the engine slowly and uh, get it in the final fine position by getting a bar such as this uh, torque wrench and gently levering uh, on the wheel one way or the other. To slowly turn the engine round, of course the engine has to be in gear to do that, it's just uh, fourth or fifth gear to give you a good amount of leverage. Cam belt pulleys line up and checking the other end, you've also got two timing marks here and here and again it probably helps go down with the phone and then you get a straight edge, run that across the top on the top of the bolt over to see whether those alignment marks line up or not. I don't think we're going to get any better alignment than what we've got there. Cam belt timing is therefore good enough, I believe. And next we've got to check the BBC setup and the movement of the actuator valve. Next, take the spark plug uh, cover off and then start undoing all of these uh, 8mm bolts. I suggest going, starting in the middle and going rather than a spiral pattern, so in this sort of order, like this, to relieve the stress. Just each turn each bolt uh, to a small time as you go. Uh, remove the spark plugs, take a picture so you remember all the wiring. So strip everything off and then the cover's off. All right, now we have the cam cover off. You can see all the camshafts. So the next thing we'll do is take off the actuator and try and manually pull the uh, control arm shaft or actuator shaft in and out to see if we can get any movement on the control arm at all. All right, so here is the hydraulic actuator unit, hydraulic drive unit, HDU, that I've uh, just about managed to uh, remove out of that position on the side of the camshaft carrier. The way to do that is to push up the shaft into the unit while at the same time leaving the body of the unit off of the camshaft carrier body. Um, you might find that this uh, lower half of the HDU separates um, but just try and push that up 
against the main body of the unit um, and getting a pair of pliers carefully pushing the piston back up into the body also helps um, problem mainly is that the control shaft the cross shaft uh, is very very stiff and jammed so it's quite difficult to get uh, this HTU control arm out but it did uh, finally come out of the unit and uh, once you're out you need to check how smoothly this unit moves in and out of the body should come in and out like that this one has got a little bit of stickiness to it but uh, I think that would probably still work okay Could probably do with the sides maybe sanding down a little bit uh, but the biggest problem is that the, uh, the cross shaft doesn't actually rotate because they say that you should be able to get a screwdriver in the hole and persuade the cogs to move around. I wish they won't move at all. Uh, it could be because we're pushing against the uh, reluctance probably of the camshaft loads pushing on the piston valves perhaps but I have the suspicion that the cross shaft is pinched. What we can do to try and move the cross shaft uh, or control shaft is take the piston out of the HDU unit and feed it with the, uh, the gear parts facing down. Tell so this shaft is uh, very very stiff because you can't push that down at all. You can't rotate the cross shaft. Did manage to get a screwdriver in and lever that down. A fraction, you can see the cross shaft move just a very small amount um, and then it's very difficult to pull it back out again. So having previously found that the VVC control plunger was very very stiff to move the next stage was to try and relieve the pressure on the control shaft by uh, making sure that none of the valves were depressed so you need to have these lobes sitting in a, a raised uh, higher position. Uh, to do that fully across the whole uh, camshaft, the inlet camshaft then I found the best thing is to take the belt off the back you need to undo the bolt on this um, camshaft uh, gear uh, you really need a holder, well they recommend having a holder to hold the gear which is basically two prongs, you could try and make one up or put it in gear and handbrake on and despite uh, putting a little bit of stretch on the belts pressure is actually uh, not that huge and it's possible to undo the bolt without damaging the belt too much and uh, just un undo it quickly a uh, normal thread on the bolt then we can have the lobes coming off the valves and now uh, it's actually moved, possible to move you can see the plunger moving up and down so just moving one thumb or finger at a time that should be the sort of pressure that uh, is able to move the control shaft so you can see it's not actually uh, clamped or stuck as I thought it was previously and you can actually see the timing of the valves on the inlet side changing as you move up and down it's a little bit stiff when you pull it all the way out and then try to re-engage it in the gear again but uh, well sometimes stiff but uh, as I say it should be possible to move with that sort of ease uh, to aid uh, quick reassembly and um, to get the timing back to where it was I put a little paint marks both on the belt and on the gears um, and double check the timing versus the rave manual as well of course but having the uh, belt makes uh, having the, the marks on the belt and the gears with a bit of paint makes it doubly easy so on reassembling the hydraulic control unit of course it's essential that the gears of the plunger line up correctly with the control shaft gears and to check that you've got to look in this little hole here I'm not sure whether this will come out very well on the camera let me just point it's a tiny little hole there and also another tiny little hole there and inside that you'll see a hole in a rotating disc that's got to line up and that moves when the control shaft rotates and in order to get the control shaft to move you need a little small screwdriver something like this put it in this hole and try and wiggle it grab onto the gears and try and move the gears so they go anti-clockwise so in that sort of rotation this way around and then you should see the little hole appear in that little 
uh, the hole in the rotation disc should line up with the hole in the camshaft carrier and I recommend you move it a little, little past um, where the two holes line up and if you can see that that's all very good but basically the hole in the inner rotating part has moved a little bit to the right compared to the hole in the camshaft carrier and that enables this to slot in nicely and when it comes out when it's at the top of its travel and the two holes exactly line up it's very easy if you keep taking in and taking out it's very easy for that hole alignment to gradually shift to the left that's why I've got start off gradually shifted to the right and so now I'll reassemble the hydraulic control unit and test it with uh, some uh, pressured air to see if it moves so when inserting the hydraulic control unit have the piston in the unit at its uppermost position and then when reinserting it to engage in the gears you should have this little hole aligned with the hole in the inside rotating disc which has got a hole in and I'm not sure whether this camera is able to show you that or not because you need both the torch and the camera in at the same time you may or may not be able to see that I'm not sure it's out of focus or not but the two holes basically line up and at both sides so we're talking about this little hole here and again not sure you can see it but anyhow the two holes line up basically the hole in the casing lines up with the hole in the inside rotating disc part of the BBC unit it doesn't line up when you reinstall the HCU unit then you have to take it off, rotate the control shaft uh, a little bit more in an anti-clockwise direction looking that way and basically that then moves the inner hole slot to the right and I found you need to basically move it uh, quite uh, just past the hole in the, uh, the body of the camshaft carrier and then when you insert it the hole comes back and they line up. Um, I did have a little bit of problem when testing the coils by the way. Uh, these coils seem to have an internal diode in them uh, which stops what's called the back EMF voltage from blowing up the electronics. Uh, it's not obvious they have got diodes but uh, during testing if you put a full 12 volts on these coils from a battery and get it the wrong way around what you'll find is you'll blow the diode which then results in a short across the coil and then of course the solenoid won't work um, I did do a little bit of a bodge because I found one of the diodes had blown and shorted out the coil and uh, which would have meant new coils but one way of getting around that is to uh, reconnect 12 volts direct from the battery again unfused uh, if you keep it on there long enough you'll find you'll actually blow the diode open you see a little puff of plastic come up just under these metal pins uh, then that allows the coil to work again and you'll have to connect an external diode across the two wires and I've got a section at the end of this video showing how you insert those diodes and test the coils you can disconnect this whole solenoid unit nut at the end allows these solenoids to come off and then get a wrench on this nut here and the whole unit will unscrew uh, you can then put a voltage onto the coil and you'll see an inner part of metal move backwards and forwards just by about uh, plus or minus two millimeters and that confirms the coils are both working and the inner mechanism is working so that's a good way of testing the actual solenoid is operating uh, so sh sh we should have everything working there now um, the next test is to make sure that the piston moves freely in the HCU and the control arm is still moving so currently we've got things aligned uh, don't forget all these cam lobes are pointing up you've still got the belt off the cam doesn't matter what cranksh crankshaft position and therefore valve time we've got on the rest of it because this uh, inner timing mark in here in the VCUs does not change with engine position only changes with the uh, control arm position the next test is to put uh, some air pressure into this point where the oil temperature sensor normally goes and according to the rage manual that should then push the piston down move the control arm and we've got I just point with a spanner we've got a little bit of paint in there I might need to put a torch on as well 
you got a little bit of paint on the control rod which is here and we should hopefully see that moving when we put some air pressure on here so we'll do that next all right so i've got an airline and we use one of these um rubber ball inflator adapters in our tire inflator which is correct size just to push in the end there hopefully it'll give us enough pressure so what we'll try and do is get a torch on that little mark on the control arm control rod apply a little bit of pressure let's see if the camera can see and hopefully we'll see the arm rotate when we put some pressure on let's see yes it did move so Bob's your uncle we know that the VVC control mechanism is working we know the coils are good apart from having to have some external diodes and now we know that the two cams are synchronized together and it's just a matter of uh, getting the cam belt reinstalled with the correct timing double check the timing mark on the crankshaft versus the timing belts uh, I won't bother describing all that it's in the manual uh, but that basically confirms correct operation of the VVC valves and hopefully when I start the engine back up again providing the camshaft sensor is working we should uh, have a fully revving engine that doesn't rev limit to five and a half thousand revs and revs all the way over to seven thousand two hundred revs okay and indeed that actually did fix the problem uh, it revved all the way up to over seven thousand revs so that's the end of this procedure next procedure is about testing the VVC solenoids so they both should be around uh, 8 ohms resistance which you can test with a multimeter, multimeter quite easily there we go about 8 and similarly the other one about 8 now if like me uh, you are testing them by putting 12 volts on see if you can detect any um, noise or change in the engine note if it was running as the solenoid gets activated one way or the other if you happen to put the 12 volts on the wrong way around because these have internal diodes you can blow up the diode and then you get uh, a short uh, across the coil and you measure the res resistance as zero ohms and what you can do uh, then is instead of relying on the internal diode that's blown um, you can basically uh, the first instance it blows it shorts but if you keep applying uh, a lot of power to it it'll then go open circuit and burn out you might get a little splutter of plastic coming out as it's overheated and you'll then get that back to the 8 ohms resistance uh, you still need a diode in there to protect the ECU electronics from the back EMF from the coil as the coils turn off it generates a reverse voltage that's um, a high voltage spike <clears throat> Um, what you can do is put a diode like this one, happen to have in my scrap box very small off, off cuts. This diode is a 1N1, no, sorry, 1N4003, which is about a 1 amp diode. I think that'll be good enough to protect it. And the band on one side of the diode means that diode conducts when that side of the diode is negative. So you connect that to the positive side of the coil. So uh, the black uh, side blackish wire black and yellow or something that one is on both of them blackish side is the negative and this brownish one is the positive so the band on the diode connects to the positive um, so you could pull back the sleeve just clamp it put a diode in there insulate it all up sleeve back over and uh, looks the same as normal but protects the coil saves you having to buy new coils when the coils have uh, uh, gone short circuit internally